The title of God's Word that we are going to study together today is The Prophecies of Prophets and the Thoughts of People of the World. Through the teachings of God in the Bible, let us think about how the prophecies in the Bible look in the eyes of the people of the world and how different God's thoughts and the thoughts of people of the world in this age are. I want you to understand that all our thoughts and judgments should be based on the thoughts and judgments of God. Let's go back to 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ came to the earth. When Jesus came in the flesh, He went through childhood and also went through the time of a young adult. Then He started working as a male adult, preaching the gospel. Jesus was born just like any other child. About His coming, the prophets prophesied, For to us a child is born, but He is God Himself. However, in the eyes of people, He looked like merely an ordinary child, not God. Baby Jesus grew up and became a young adult. People regarded Him merely as a son of the carpenter named Joseph and of Mary. When Jesus was baptized and started preaching the gospel at the age of 30, He said, I and the Father are one, meaning that He is God Himself. He proclaimed God's coming to this earth according to the prophecies of the prophets and made it known to the people. But ordinary people picked up stones and tried to stone Him, saying that it was blasphemy. Today, we need to remember that there is a great difference between the prophecies of the prophets and the thoughts of people in this world. Heavenly Father and Mother came to this earth in the age of the Holy Spirit and lived their lives according to the prophecies. Nevertheless, people in this world treat them as ordinary people from a physical point of view. Then, what did God say about those people? God said He would hide His glorious prophecies and thoughts from them. But to His children, He would make all His glory known. Today, we will see how different the thoughts of people in this world were from the prophecies of the prophets regarding the same matter. Through the prophecies of the prophets, let us take some time to understand the situation when Jesus came the first time and in this age as well. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prophet Isaiah had prophesied in advance that God would come to this earth 700 years before it took place. He said, God will appear on this earth as a child. But what about the thoughts of people in the world? They oppose God's plans, thinking, how can God be a man? Let's see this scene. John chapter 6, verse 41. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? 
They said, Aren't his parents Joseph the carpenter and Mary? We know his parents, so how can he say that he came down from heaven? Our God was in heaven and then came to this earth, putting on the tent of the flesh, didn't he? Because he came to this earth, he told them that he came from heaven, but people grumbled. Like this, there was a great difference between the prophecies of the prophets and the thoughts of people in that age. Then which way should we take and go forward? Isn't it the way that is right from God's point of view? We should follow the prophecies of the prophets and the Bible. Let's continue with verse 43. Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Here, people regarded Jesus merely as the son of a carpenter, and so they rejected him and slandered him. But the Bible and the prophets prophesied that he is God who has come to the earth to save mankind. About the same Jesus, the world and the Bible have different points of view. People in the world and the prophets think differently. Then which path should we accept? And which path should we reject? Thinking together about this on the Sabbath day, I hope that our faith will be established correctly and firmly. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This means that He is God Himself. Verse 31. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone Him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. How did the Bible and the prophets prophesy about God coming to the earth? They clearly prophesied that He would come as a man. However, the people of that age said, How dare you, a mere man, claim to be God? They tried to stone Jesus. We can see this in John chapter 10. There was a great difference between the prophecies of the prophets and the thoughts of people. Jesus is God, who came to this earth in the flesh, isn't he? However, when he came to this earth in the flesh, only a few people recognized him as God. Their eyes did not see the prophecies. They didn't understand the correct meaning of God's word. They didn't have the spiritual eyes to correctly recognize God as God. In this age too, People don't know the prophecies of the prophets and they don't know the will of God. Here, we can see what a great mistake people make when trying to judge God and understand God with visible things only. 
Now the whole world looks up to Jesus saying, He is the Savior who came to this earth to save mankind. But how did the people of religion and the people of the world judge Jesus in those days? They called him a heretic. The great truth, saving mankind, was treated as heresy in that age. Let's go to Acts chapter 24, verse 1. Five days later, the high priest Ananias went down to Caesarea with some of the elders and a lawyer named Tertullus, and they brought their charges against Paul before the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullus presented his case before Felix. We've enjoyed a long period of peace under you, and your foresight has brought about reforms in this nation. Everywhere and in every way, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with profound gratitude. But in order not to weary you further, I would request that you be kind enough to hear us briefly. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of what? Ringleader of the Nazarene sect. Whom did they indicate by the Nazarene sect? They indicated Jesus. Jesus is God, who came to this earth to save all people. But the people of that age and the men of religion of that age regarded him as a heretic. Then what about the Bible and the prophets? Did they say that Christ was a heretic? Jesus said, I am He. The men of religion of that age and the people of the world of that time branded Christ as a heretic. They gave such a disgraceful and dishonorable title to Him. Everybody, the things that happened in the age of the sun 2,000 years ago are now occurring again in this age. For a long time of 2,000 years, God patiently endured such a disgraceful and dishonorable title, the Nazarene sect, for us to be here today. Now, the time is near for God to rise and wield the power of the iron scepter, right? On the day of judgment, they won't be able to say any word in front of God. God will say, I told you so many times, but you despised the prophecies of the Bible and of the prophets, didn't you? Let's move on to Isaiah chapter 25. About this age too, God said, I will go to the earth again in this way. Then, recognize me and receive me. Let us confirm this in Isaiah chapter 25. There was a great difference between the prophet's prophecies and man's thoughts. Let's see verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, He will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. What a gracious promise! God will destroy death forever with aged wine. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of His people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, Surely this is our God. This is our God. We trusted in Him. We have waited for Him, and He saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in Him. We have waited for Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. The people in this prophecy say, when we see Him destroying death with aged wine, He must be our God, because giving eternal life is something that no one can do but only God. That's why He is the one we've been waiting for. He will save us. Salvation cannot be given by anything else, but with the Passover bread and wine, 
that have been kept for a long time. Only the one who has come to destroy death forever with these is our God, who can open the way to salvation. The same prophecy is mentioned in Hebrews chapter 9. Jesus is to appear how many times to bring us salvation? Jesus is to appear a second time. It means when God comes to this earth in the flesh, He will do this, so recognize Him. In Revelation chapter 22, what did the Spirit and the Bride say? Come. If you understand, come. If you realize, come and receive the water of life. Like this, God let us know the ways of glory through the prophets. God predicted it and opened the way. Even though the Spirit and the Bride have come to the earth in the same way as 2,000 years ago, what do people say with their human thoughts? Do they receive Christ Ansang Hong, the Holy Spirit, and the New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, the Bride? They say, mere humans claim to be God. No matter how many testimonies of the Bible and prophecies of the prophets there are, people are all rejecting and denying them. What will be the result? Even though they painfully regret in the burning fire of hell that they didn't receive the testimonies we delivered, it will be useless. That's why we must give our ears to the prophecies of the prophets and the teachings of God. We must never look at God with man's thoughts and point of view. When we look at God with the eyes of prophecy, we can find God correctly and follow God's glorious way. Two thousand years ago, Jesus taught the truth of the New Covenant. He gave all His teachings to save mankind. However, they called the truth heresy. It is the same in this age. We are following all the teachings of Jesus Christ as they are. We've accepted the new covenant and follow the path of the truth. But what do people say? They say, the Church of God is heretical. They say what people said 2,000 years ago. History repeats itself. Therefore, we must understand why those words are written throughout the Bible. Two thousand years ago, when Apostle Paul went to court, being accused by lawyer Tertullus and the high priests, they said about the Apostle Paul, he is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. They branded Apostle Paul's faith in Christ and all his preaching as heresy. Brothers and sisters, that truth is our truth. What did Paul preach? He preached the Passover, Christ Jesus, and God who came in the flesh. Everyone. Was Jesus a heretic? He looked heretical from man's viewpoint. But in actuality, his teaching was a great truth saving mankind. Two thousand years ago, the truth of the new covenant that we have now was treated like that. That's why the Bible says we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God in this age too. Let us all pass through all hardships and receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of heaven. Jesus preached the truth of the new covenant, and Apostle Paul testified that. Although it was treated as heresy 2,000 years ago, that's not how the Bible and the prophets testified about that. They evaluate it as a great truth that can save mankind. They assess it as the only truth that can save the world. However, in the eyes of people, God looked like a heretic as He came in the flesh. 
As the new covenant was preached, they rejected it, calling it a lie, because it was different from what they preached. Let's look at Mark chapter 3, verse 20. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. Jesus preached the gospel at every place very diligently. If Jesus went to this place, lots of people gathered here to hear the word. And if Jesus went to that place, people gathered there to hear the word. He had no time to eat. Verse 20, Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. They even came to seize Jesus, saying that he was out of his mind. Everybody, this is how ordinary people view God, judging him outwardly. Even his family and relatives didn't understand what Jesus was doing. However, his teachings were great teachings saving mankind. Today, we need to think about why all these words are written in the Bible. We ought to know there is a great gap between the prophecies of the prophets and the thoughts of the people of the world. We don't need to be frustrated thinking, why don't people believe it? Why don't people understand what we preach? The only thing we need to do is to preach. That is our mission. So let's preach hard. God told us to preach diligently to everybody. There must be a reason God tells us to do so. After we preach to everybody, there will be a clear difference on the last judgment day between those who accepted what we preached as God's Word and those who understood it not as God's Word, but as something that some people who were out of their minds claimed. God said, a man reaps what he sows. The reason they make a wrong choice is because they sowed a wrong thought. If they listen to the truth thinking, I must believe all the Word of God, then they will open the doors of their hearts and come to God's Word saying, Amen. Today, we are confirming once again how the people viewed Jesus Christ when He came 2,000 years ago and preached the gospel. The people in those days branded Jesus Christ's teachings as heresy. Let's see Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Here, it says that the king of Zion will come. The king of Zion indicates God, right? Before Jesus came, Prophet Zechariah had already prophesied that God would come, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Let's see how Jesus fulfilled this prophecy in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king, that is the king of Zion, comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, He said to them, My house will be called the house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. Here, Jesus entered Jerusalem riding on a colt. What had already been prophesied in Zechariah chapter 9 was being fulfilled right here. But how did the religious leaders of that age and the people of the world view the work of Jesus while this prophecy was being fulfilled. Let's see it in verse 15. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the Son of David, they were what? They were indignant. It was because they were jealous of him. Hosanna to the Son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise? And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Here, in this scene, Jesus was fulfilling the prophecy of Prophet Zechariah. The crowds followed him with joy, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! They received him in glory. But what about the people of the world, the false men of religion, who stood on the opposite side of Jesus? Were they pleased with it? The Bible says they were indignant. In other words, they were annoyed by their shouting. They asked Jesus, Why do you let those children shout like that? Today, we should understand that there is this much difference between the prophecies of the prophets and the thoughts of the people of the world. We need to believe, thinking, God did all this to fulfill these prophecies. God came to this earth as a child to fulfill those prophecies. When King Herod ordered that all boys who were two years old and under, be destroyed to get rid of Jesus, the prophecy of Prophet Jeremiah that Rachel would weep for her children was fulfilled. When we look back at history in this age, we can understand everything that was done in the age of the sun, and we can also confirm that all prophecies of the Bible were fulfilled. Everybody, in the prophecies of the prophets, God is described as truly great and holy. However, people of that age regarded God merely as the son of a carpenter. The reason we need to understand this sad situation is because we must never fail to receive Heavenly Father and Mother when they come to this earth as the Spirit and the Bride in the age of the Holy Spirit. We ought to have the eyes of the prophets who wrote the prophecies. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. 
like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53 was written by prophet Isaiah 700 years before Jesus came. This prophecy showed that God would come to this earth in the flesh and take up our infirmities, sorrows, and iniquities. Christ was sacrificed on the cross as a sin offering to redeem us from our sins. According to the prophecies, Christ was seized by their hands and was unjustly crucified. About this, the prophets in the Bible tell us that He suffered all those things and was crucified in order to pay for our transgressions and iniquities. However, the people in that age thought differently. In Matthew chapter 27, while asking for Jesus' crucifixion, they said that Jesus' blood would be on them and on their children. How confident they were! If they had even a little bit recognized Christ as God, would they have dared to say that? Would they have spat on Him? Would they have slapped Him on His face? Would they have made a scorning remark? In their eyes, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth in the flesh, looked only like a man, not as God at all. In the prophecies of the prophets, it was recorded that He would take up our sins and be crucified for our transgressions. Let's continue with verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet He did not open His mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. When he died, who were on his right side and left side? Two robbers were there. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. According to Matthew chapter 27, verse 57, Jesus was placed in the tomb of a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph. All the prophecies were fulfilled as they were recorded. However, in the eyes of the people of the world, they seem like ordinary events. Let's continue with verse 10. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. 700 years before Jesus came, God already had such beautiful deeds of Christ written down in the prophecy of the prophet. However, in the eyes of the people of the world, Jesus Christ looked like a heretic of heretics who stirred division among the Jews 
and made the Jews nervous and confused and violated the doctrines that they had kept in that age. That's why everybody took the lead in crucifying Jesus, shouting, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Such behavior shows how little they understood the Bible and the prophecies of the prophets about God and how they couldn't recognize God Almighty who came to this earth in the flesh. We can see how they didn't view Jesus as God. Today in this age, God the Father and God the Mother have come to this earth to save us. We must never fail to accept God. With the faith of Peter's, John's, James, and Apostle Paul's, we must receive God. Also, we ought to lead people to Zion by keeping in step with the gospel work that is being carried out throughout the world so that we can enter the eternal kingdom of heaven together hand in hand. By this, I would like to conclude today's words. Thank you very much. God bless you.